We end this series of lectures on cell structure by talking about archaea and eukarya. Archaea are similar in shape, size, and basic cell structure to bacteria. And it was not until 1977 that Carl Woes noticed the profound differences in their 16S ribosomal RNA and proposed that they were, in fact, a completely different life form. It turns out that this apparent similarity was deceiving. Archaea are phylogenetically more related to eukarya than back to bacteria. We will talk more about this in Module 4, but for now, we will look at the structural differences between the three domains. We will only look at a few general and important differences between archaea and bacteria, but I do want to note that these unusual microorganisms can have all sorts of fun shapes. Halo quadratum can form flat square shapes, while Ignococcus has an outer membrane that loops out from the cytoplasmic membrane pretty spectacularly. There are many individual cellular differences that define archaea. Here we'll just talk about a few. There are two major phyla, Euarchaeota and Crenarchaeota. Many live in extreme environments, but that may be just a limitation of our isolation methods. In non-extreme environments, bacteria outcompete them on isolation media we use, and so we don't see the archaea. Those we have isolated from extreme environments will have unique features because of where they live. One major difference in archaea is their unique lipids. First, the alkyl chains attached to glycerol are ether-linked, as shown, B shown here, not ester-linked as they are in bacteria and eukarya. Second, the alkyl chains are formed from isoprene units instead of acetate units. The overall structure of their lipids is unique. The ether link connects them and a methyl group decorates every fourth carbon in the alkyl chain. This changes the properties of the lipids, making them more stable in high temperatures and acidic environments. If an archaean lives in very hot environments, greater than 85 degrees centigrade, it may even form diglycerol tetraethers. These will cross completely through the membrane and be very stable. Archaeal cell membranes will have a very similar structure to their bacterial and eukaryal counterparts. As you can see, they look here similar, but if you're using these biphantyl units, you'll see that the alkyl chain goes all the way through, and this makes it very stable. But physiochemically, both of these membranes will behave in a similar fashion. Remember that bacteria have two major cell types, gram-positive and gram-negative. In archaea, many diverse cell structures have been found. There are microbes that have just a protein surface layer projecting from the cytoplasmic membrane, such as sulfobales. Ignococcus has a structure reminiscent of a gram-negative cell wall. Methanosphera forms structures similar to a gram-positive cell wall with a thick layer of peptidoglycan-like molecules outside its cytoplasmic membrane. There can be many different variations on this theme. In most cases, an S layer or surface layer is very common. These S layers are formed from a single repeated cell surface protein with the ability to assemble into two dimensional crystalline protein arrays, as you can see on this figure. These proteins are of great interest for nanotechnology since they can be used to build covers to nanomachines. Okay, a quick question to check your comprehension. In general, Lipids in the archaeal membrane lack true fatty acids. The correct answer is true. They're not fatty acids. I finish up these lectures by briefly mentioning eukaryotic cell structure. I won't spend much time on this since you've had it previously in your biology class. In general, eukaryotic cells are more complex and have multiple membrane-bound organelles. They also have an endomembrane system. Organelles that are common to all cells include the nucleus. The nuclear envelope contains the nucleus with up to 46 chromosomes. Also inside the nucleus is the nucleolus, and this is where the ribosomes are assembled. The endoplasmic reticulum is a series of membrane-bound sacs and tubules. It connects to the nucleus and has two types, rough and smooth. 
Rough is decorated with ribosomes and is the site of exported protein synthesis. The smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes. It is the site of fatty acid and phospholipid biosynthesis. Eukaryotic cells contain mitochondria. These are the powerhouses of the cell and are numerous. They can account for up to 20% of the cell volume. They contain an outer and inner membrane with the inner membrane following to form cristae. The cristae is packed with electron transport proteins that carry out respiration. Inside the mitochondria is a fluid filled matrix. In photosynthetic eukaryotes, a chloroplast is the site of photosynthetic reactions. It will contain chlorophyll. To help you retain all we have covered about microbial cell structure, I'm asking you to make a concept map. Concept maps take ideas and relate them with action words. For example, I could write the word microorganism. I could then link with the word to bacteria and use an action phrase of can be. I could do the same for archaea and eukarya. From there, I can write down ester-linked lipids and ether-linked lipids and draw arrows from archaea to ester-linked lipids. The action here would be, the action word here would be contain. I have provided an assignment on Canvas with more detailed directions. Please complete it as directed.